going to continue from Sunday on the topic, Waiting on the Lord. turning your Bibles to Psalms 25 and verse 5. Psalms 25 and verse 5. That was the main scripture for Sunday. So the topic question for tonight is, what are the consequences for not waiting on the Lord? <coughs> what are the consequences for not waiting on the Lord? And the reason why we read that verse in its context was, um, what specifically is David asking of God? What are some of the things that David's asking from God from those verses? Asking for strength, patience. mercy, guidance, um, forgiveness, please forgive me. Inside of that, um, inside of those requests, in verse 5, where we looked at Sunday, it says, lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of all my salvation. On you I will wait all day. So, the irony is, he's telling God that he'll wait for him, and that's wrapped around verses, verses where he's asking God, to wait for him because he's asking when you ask God for mercy or to be patient with you you're asking him to wait because you're not ready so you ask him for forgiveness of your sins you asking God to wait so of course David has to tell God that I'm waiting on you all day because he know God been waiting on David his whole life <laughs> so a, a day is nothing compared to a man's life these requests that we make all the time we have to be understanding that we're really asking God to be patient with us. Yeah. So we have to, when you look at Jesus' example to the disciples on how they should pray, it makes sense that you ask for forgiveness of your transgression because you need to forgive those that transgress against you but you need to be more concerned with God forgiving you for what you do. So think of the parable where the guy had a huge debt and he was forgiven of his debt and he 
took a couple of steps and somebody owed him a much substantial less amount than what he owed and he was wringing that guy's neck. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can ask God for things and then lose sight of the fact that we are supposed to be the ones waiting on God. So this list that David has here is very much so a spiritual prayer request and he's talking to God about not remembering the sins of his youth, about having mercy on him, about bringing him um, guidance. Verse 4, teach me your path, show me your ways. Um, verse 6, your tender mercies and your loving kindness. He's asking God to remember those things. Please remember your own mercies and your own loving kindness because David understands full well, not only because of the type of person he was in his character, but who he was to the society in which he represented. He was the king, so he was responsible for not only the physical well-being, but the spiritual well-being of everybody in Israel. So he had a relationship with God that gave him insight on these sorts of things. Yes. So for us... When we're looking at the consequences for not waiting on God, we have to understand that no man is an island. And when you have a church group and we're all pieced together by God, sin has a rippling effect. Not only among your own personal life, not only among your own family, <coughs> not only among your own friends, but among the whole church. Same thing with David. So the things that David continually asks for forgiveness... Remember, he is on the pedestal. So when he yeah. falls, everybody yeah. is affected. So everyone here, think of that in your own life. Whether you're the head of your household or just a number, another member in your household, whatever you do in your ups and your downs affects everyone around you. Now think yeah. of church because we don't think that this is enough. What you do on a daily basis when you don't read your Bible, when you yeah. don't pray, when you yeah. don't study, when you don't have faith, it affects the person to the left or right of you. You want to know why? Because when you come to studies, when you come to events, you're not here. Amen. And it affects the rest of us because mm -hmm. it's a body. You can't think that you have your own life and it doesn't affect the people in this room because it does. So when you don't speak and you run out, everybody knows. So you don't have to put a prayer request card in. We already know. When you're vacant from events, when you're absent from the body, everybody already knows that. Yes. So the consequences for not waiting on God for a church group is devastating. Because when we individually every day take our own method of how we're going to live that day, yes. it affects the group. Mm -hmm. That's why here all the time, we're always talking about having Bible studies. If you don't understand something, if you have a question about something, have a Bible study. Why? Because what you tell your friends reflects the rest of us. If you don't understand baptism and your friends ask you about baptism, I go to this church. So does Cindy. So if they run into Cindy, they're going to say, oh, Ellis told me sprinkling was okay. So now that affects her. She have to do damage control. Mm -hmm. When we act a certain way, everything about us in terms of this topic about waiting on God <laughs> reflects on our own individual spiritual life. So this yeah, list no. are very similar to the things that we should be asking God for every single day Amen. because it just proves that we're not waiting. Amen. So the same thing, if you go all the way back to Adam and Eve, they didn't wait on God. Amen. You have to understand that it, God and Adam were friends. So even if Adam didn't understand, even if he was shaky, even if he was like, ooh, I'm not sure, all he had to do was wait. Because him and God walked and talked. He could have just said, let me just see. When God gets here, then we'll talk about it. But he didn't wait. All sinful rebellion is us as human beings not waiting on God because we get impatient. We get impatient. So now think of your own childhood when your parents told you not to do something or to wait for something or think of holiday times or your mom or your dad is cooking a meal or a cake or something. We can't wait. We just waiting for a couple of seconds and then after that, we just need it right now. I have to have it right now. We just can't understand a concept of somebody saying wait. So they do psychological tests with young kids 
where they put kids into a room and behind the glass they're watching and they say, hey, I'm going to put this cookie here. Mm -hmm. And if you can wait till I come back not to eat it, you're going to get two cookies. Mm -hmm. And they leave. Then they watch it. So then, of course, a couple of seconds, kid is like, okay. But the problem is when you look at the cookie. See, if I'm looking over here, I don't see the cookie, I'm better. Because I remember it's a cookie there. But when I look at the cookie, then some of the kids, you know, walking by. <laughs> <laughs> but once I fixate on the cookie, it's almost impossible for me to think about two cookies when I'm just going to devour this one cookie. Right? So that's the same thing for us. It's very hard. Be honest with yourself. It's hard for us on a daily basis to conceptualize a life better than this life when we're looking at this life. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why you have to change your focus. If your focus is on what you see, if you only can think of going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home, you're already fixated on that. So when God is telling you, hey, get your hand off that plow. You got to focus over here. We plowing over yeah. here. You over here running in circles. You can't conceptualize what he's talking about because you're already fixated. So it's almost impossible for you to wait because your resolve is already on that which you can see. Right? Yeah. So that's what the whole <coughs> New Testament is talking about, waiting on God. Think of the Thessalonians. Listen, God is coming. He's going to come back like a thief in the night, but you yeah. have to wait. That's just how God set it up. There's no rushing with God. You have to wait. If you can't wait, you're going to miss your blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that this comes down to your individual life. Mm -hmm. What are you fixated on? Because it's impossible to not think of elephants if I tell you don't think of elephants. Because your mind is already, well, why did he say this? So let me think about this. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we are told to be in this world, but not of it, it all comes down to this. Your mm -hmm. focus. When you wake up in the morning, whatever the first thing in your mind, that's your focus. Mm -hmm. That could be a person. That could be a task. That could be a goal. But is it God? Mm -hmm. Because if it's not, everything else the rest of the day is out of whack, out of balance. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing about all of this is you are designed to wait on God. So when you don't wait on him, it disrupts the flow of your own human nature. So that's what Adam and Eve didn't understand, that they were literally designed to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God. So when they were not allowed to physically have that, they spiritually suffered. So for us as human beings, the world don't understand that, but we with our spiritual glasses, can look at how messed up their lives are, right? But yeah. look at your own life. Mm -hmm. Look at your own 24 hours because it's very easy for us to think in large scale and we miss the big picture that no day is promised. Think of today. So the things that you were focused on all day, if they weren't about God, it disrupted your own personal purpose and design as a human being. Now, mm -hmm. you may not see it that way. You may have said, hey, I had a good day. Yeah. For Satan, some people, that's how he gets you. Right? Yeah. Hey, just be yeah. good. He don't have to disrupt people's lives the same way with chaos. Some people, he can just get off balance of good things. Hey, you had yeah. a good day, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So keep having good days then. <laughs> then you'd yeah. say, you come Wednesday night and say, I don't have a prayer request. Oh, I had a good day. And you keep having good days and you miss the point. So some of us could look at it that way. Oh, wow. Some of us could have had a horrible day. Yeah. And that day was so horrible for us that it's very hard for us to think of waiting on him tomorrow because we say, hey, I had a bad day today. So where was he at today? Why he didn't help today? So all of these different things, wherever we are when we came here, it, when we leave here, we have to refocus our mind on what God wants us to do. Because if we don't, we're disrupting our own life and our own design. We have to understand that. So you are designed to have a relationship with God. So kids are designed to have a relationship with their parents. It's not in a kid's design to not wait on their parents because a kid can't take care of themselves. So you have to wait. You can't eat. You can't bathe. You can't have shelter. You can't have a car. You can't do anything. So you have to wait on the parent. The same thing for us and God. So one of, the, one of my favorite examples of the consequences of not waiting 
is Samson. Um, Samson is a, um, a figure that we teach our young people at a very early age. It's one of those stories that a young mind can just get so excited about. Um, so if you would turn with me to Judges. You will turn with me to Judges. And we'll take a look there. We'll start in chapter 13. not going to read all of this because it goes, um, Samson's life goes through a few chapters here, um, but there's some Bible students in the room, so I'm sure we already know a lot of this story, mm -hmm. um, so what are some things that you know about Samson, if you can kind of jump start us? Strongest man in the world. Okay, strongest man. Why? Who said he was? His, what made him strong? Did he work out? Did he get a plane of fitness? Has ten dollars a month? Did he go there? Special powers. <laughs> okay. How did he know he had special powers, or God gave him special powers? Who told him that? Who, who told Samson that he had special powers? Think of chain of command. Who told Samson that? You a kid, I mean, JL is here, we have Kayvon is here, AJ is here, Alex is here. His parents, who told his parents that Samson has special powers there? God, look at verse three. Someone read verse three. Someone read three, please. Judges 13, three. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Mm -hmm. Now therefore please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. Mm -hmm. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. Mm -hmm. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God, from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Okay, so what was Samson's purpose? So we always want to know what is our purpose in life. Samson had a purpose, and he had an advantage because his parents knew his purpose before he got here. Okay. What was his What was his duty at physically though? He had a physical job that he needed to be reminded of on a daily basis. That would have probably made me excited to know that I had this. I'd be looking forward to this day. Okay, so he was supposed to be the one that was to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Did God tell his parents that he would be blind and die to do that? No. no. Never said that, right? Just said that he had to deliver them. So mm -hmm. what transpired that Samson's life had to be given at the same time that he fulfilled his purpose, which was delivering Israel from the Philistines? What happened to him? on his journey? How did he get from before he was born and being laid out that he had a duty to the point where he was blinded and he had to give his life as a sacrifice for um, fulfilling that duty? What happened to him? Because then came the from God's plan. The plan that when he should not, um, where he should be home, basically, by not cutting his, you not in, um, not clean, on, um, on doing things that's unclean, um, Okay, now let's get specific. Let's get specific here. Okay, so Samson's problem was he was he was too in tune, I believe, with his goal. This would be one of the people that had a good day and was so sidetracked by their good day, they were no spiritual good. Because if you tell a young man from his youth, not only does he have the physical attributes to back this up. That's but hey, one day you're going to physically deliver us. And you keep telling him that. Mm -hmm. That kid going to be thinking what? He's special. He's special. Just like some of you spoil your kids. You tell your kid this is the best thing since Jesus Christ. You go Jesus <laughs> Christ and then you. Right? So you spoil that kid. So that kid grow up thinking they're special, right? Mm -hmm. So special Samson. 
And Samson was so special, he thought rules didn't apply to him. Yeah. Because he was given rules. Matter of fact, the, Samson was like Eve. The rules weren't even given to him. They were given to somebody else who gave them to him. Mm -hmm. And he disregarded them. Like Patrick said, he had a wandering eye. Yeah. He figured, look, I'm strong. So, so uh, I'm strong. I never cut my hair. And I'm not going to cut my hair. So I'm going to keep being strong. So who cares about this one woman? I'm still going to do what I can do. That's what we do. We say we still can do what we can do, what we signed up for. We just gonna do these couple little things, right? So that's the same thing with Samson. So where did that get Samson? That wandering eye got him where? How far did his eye wander? So far that what happened? Got him in trouble. Can't even see nothing. So special Samson went to blind Samson. Blind. Walking in circles. That wandering eye caught him so much he was just doing like this. Just kept going around. Because we as physical beings must understand, and I know it's very hard for us to even conceptualize this, but when God is past, present, and future, he is existing before us, and he encompasses all things outside of time, God is looking at things from that point of view. Now, we can't understand that. We can only look back. We can't look forward. But when somebody knows what's going to happen already, if they tell you, hey, don't do this because this is going to happen, you should have faith in that person that they know what they're going to, that they're talking about. Amen. But don't be so quick to say, yes, you believe that because we don't believe our parents when they tell us that. Amen. Our parents say, listen, you're from my DNA. So I'm telling you not only because I'm older than you, because you are part of me. Then the other person says, now look, we both telling you and then two people made you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very good chance that if I struggle with this, you're going to struggle with it because it's DNA. If we don't believe that <laughs> physically, we definitely, Samson definitely don't believe that spiritually. God is who, who knows where, somewhere in the clouds. I'm out here doing whatever I want. My hair long, ladies like me, I'm strong. So what? Who cares? Nothing's mm -hmm. happening to me. I'm doing whatever I want and I'm getting results. See, that's what's wrong with the world. Amen. But for us spiritually, we know what? What did Peter say? That a day is as if a thousand years to God and a thousand years is as if a day. God don't operate on human time. Amen. That's mm -hmm. our problem. So as Christians, we can't operate on human time. We have to be looking at every moment, past, present, and future. And poor Samson, he had to lose his sight to see that. Mm -hmm. Even though he was told something from his youth. You would think somebody who was picked out and who was, who was given such an amazing task since they were a baby would grow up encompassing that differently. But no, he took the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. And he had to lose his sight to see. Because why? See. He still had to wait on God. Because yeah, God picked on. him. So whether he physically did what God asked him to, spiritually did what God asked him to do or not, he still physically was going to do what God asked mm -hmm. him to do. So that's what happens in the world. So sometimes we get hit with questions like, hey, why do bad things happen to good people? Or if God is so loving, how could he how can he allow evil and all these things? <laughs> Listen, don't be confused. God is still in control. So I think past the idea of three equaling one, which is the Godhead being confusing, the next most confusing thing for human beings is how people can have free will and still do what God want them to do, right? But that's power. The power to allow you to make your own decisions on a daily basis, but still your decisions won't disrupt the, the game plan of 7 billion people living in the world. That's power. That's mm -hmm. not something to be confused about. That's something to be in awe over. That somebody can be so powerful that they can let each and every one of us do what we want to do. But when we put in prayer requests, we can literally change things. 
-hmm. if we wait on the Lord. We can literally change things. That we see that in Moses' life, we see that in David's life, and we see that in Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. Those people were grabbing on Jesus so he can change things. Yeah. As he walked Amen. through crowds, they were grabbing him. Yeah. Change. Change me, please, right now. I want you to change. So when we go all the way back to the list that David was giving in 25.5, we have to understand that waiting on the Lord starts with personal change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Personal change. So prayer requests about patience and um, having mercy and all those things, we know as Bible students those are personal change prayer requests. Those aren't things like, hey, I just want to become a better Christian. You know that there's things in your life that you're literally struggling with that you're asking for help just like David asked for help specifically. Yeah, you know, I'd like to say when we become, uh, oh God, I don't know how to put it, but when we become so special, or uh, uh, we can't wait on God, then we become blind mm -hmm. too. <coughs> and that, that's an everyday thing, really, because we take too much for granted. Mm -hmm. We can't really see. We, we can't wait on God. I find in my life, let me tell you one thing, I've had things to come up in my life, and I, I didn't set a time, but I expected it to be shortly. But you, you can't put time on God. But you know one thing? He answered on his own time and in his own way. Mm -hmm. I know that. God knows it. Anybody knows it. I know it. So I've learned to wait on God. Ask him and believe you got it, brother, and it's yours. And when you wait on yeah, God, wait you on get God. better results. Yes, Lord. Erica, go ahead. Um, in Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14, it says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, mm -hmm. and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yes, Lord. And just like in this whole year, I feel like I keep finding this verse, like, randomly somebody will put it online, and it's like the first thing in my Facebook feed, or somebody will send it to me, and it has such significance because verse 13 says, I would have lost heart. And I think even with Samson, I mean, he begged his parents for a wife. He wanted to be something that God had called him to be because he had lost the patience for his true calling and so i think part of you know waiting on god is to not lose heart because you know you're believing in the goodness that's going to happen and mm -hmm. that faith is difficult i think for us to have because like you said there's so many things that you see and you're waiting for the thing that you don't see be yeah. it heaven or you know maybe you're waiting for a health situation to be um to come into healing, maybe you're waiting for a child to become a Christian. Like those are the things that like we we can't really see that the way that we want to see it. But I just think you know, for me especially, I'm trying to not lose heart in the unseen, and that's it's difficult. But like it's really the only way to be pleasing to God, and it's the only way to be happy. Yes. That's the thing we have to understand That what God is asking you to do It's not just because he wants you to do it It's because you were designed to live like that Amen. That's what we have to understand we, You were designed Look at your own physical life A baby is designed to wait on his parents Baby can't come out the womb and say Oh I'm going to work Can't do nothing Eyes don't even work right Can't even blink right Don't even see anything Just shapes you're not designed to do it your own. You are designed to wait. You as a human being are designed to follow instructions. Mm -hmm. and so we have to understand that. Let's look at a couple of verses because that verse that you pulled out was one that I was going to bring up. Um, Psalms is full of verses of not only waiting on the Lord, but telling you why to wait and how to wait in patience yes, and knowledge and perseverance. Um, in Psalms 90, if someone can read three through five. Um, that's a verse, that's a passage that I love, Psalms 93 through 5, um, giving us a couple of instructions before we close on not only why we should wait, but how we should wait. Psalms 93 through 5. 
because it ties in with what Erica and Mildred were just saying. Psalms 90, 3 through 5. I have a different version, but... Um, okay, go ahead. Return men back to dust, dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has yes, just gone by, yes, yes. or like a watch in the night. In the night. You sweep men away in the, you sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Mm. I'll read six too. Right. So in the morning it springs up new. By evening it is dry and withered. So this verse to me, the reason why I should, one of the reasons why I should wait on God is because he's more powerful than me. So the person who's more powerful in the room got to command the most respect. And the least powerful have to wait on the most powerful. It says that you carry them away like a flood. They are like asleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it was past. And like a watch in the night. Turn with me to uh, someone read Second Peter 3 and verses 7 through 9. Second Peter 3, 7 through 9. We quoted it earlier, but let's, let's look at it. Second Peter 3, 7 through 9. Knowing, the, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? That's Second Peter. Uh, yes, yeah, Second Peter 3. Second Peter, believe it. 7 through 9. 7 through 9. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, okay, good. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, mm. and a thousand years as one day. one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, mm. not willing that any should perish, but that we all should come to repentance. Okay, so now, be mindful of what you're asking God for, because God's main focus for your life is not physical. So what you're asking for may hinder your spiritual goal that God has for you, because this says that God's desire is what? Not all men be happy, be rich, have good health, is what? That none would perish. So when you're asking God for things, you know why maybe sometimes he tell you no? Because it don't fit. It don't fit. It's like a kid asking for ice cream for dinner. No. You're not a bad parent for telling that kid no. You can't have that. Because you're going to get sick and guess who's going to be up all night cleaning up? Me. Mm -hmm. So look at God. We ask God for things and when we don't <laughs> wait, we go get them anyway. And then we trying to keep God up figuratively speaking. What? We praying now. Yeah. Help, please help me. Prayer request every second. Oh, prayer request me. Another one. Help again and say yes. Huh? Like we have to understand that God's design and plan is about spiritual first. Look at verse 7. That the same word in verse 6 that caused those things that happened in the flood are what? Powerful. Mm -hmm. Keeping stored up and reserved until the day of judgment. God rules mm -hmm. and keeps this universe together by his mouth. Mm -hmm. He just said, let there be light. And there was light. Yes. He don't even have to do anything physically. He just speak it into existence. So that's the God that we serve, but we have to wait on him because ultimately mm -hmm. his main goal is to get us back to him. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we pray for is to keep us here. We be praying for things and saying, God, listen, it'd be nice to meet you one day, but not today. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of our prayers are, are focused around. Not that it's wrong to pray for physical things, but no. don't be upset if some of those things, the answer is no, because maybe it doesn't fit in your own life. Mm -hmm. Then maybe it doesn't fit in the church. 
then maybe it doesn't fit in the plan of salvation for the rest of the 7 billion people that are walking around. Right. Because God is weaving everybody's lives together. He loves you, but he loves you enough to not give you the things that are going to hurt you. And when you don't wait on him and you grab them by your own means, don't be surprised at the results. Samson shouldn't be surprised he went from special Samson to blind Samson. Because he deviated from the plan. Um, Psalms 135. This will be our last psalm. Psalms 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. Oh, go on. Somebody go wait. On. I wait for the Lord and my soul waits. And in this word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watch when you wait for the Lord. Okay, perfect. I love that that in yeah. his word it's talking about. My soul waits. In his mm -hmm. word I also have hope. Because why? Yeah, so, so whenever I think of things spiritually, I think I like to think of them mathematically because they have to make sense in the equation. Yeah. So in order for me to know why I should wait in wait for the Lord and have hope in his word yeah. is because of Romans ten seventeen. What does Romans ten seventeen say? So in faith. Okay, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in order for me to have faith, I have to have hear the word of God. What does Hebrews 11 1 say? Now faith That's is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Psalm 135. Read it one more time. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Yep. And then now read 6. 6 is and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Okay. So in order for me to have faith, I have to hear the word. So we know that in the beginning the word was with God, the word was God. First we have to understand that what faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, is the evidence of things not seen. Okay, why does that matter? Because verse 6 says that it's impossible without faith to please God because first you have to acknowledge who he is and be and understand that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's math. That's 1 plus 1 equals 2. So as a Christian, we're not talking about the world. As a Christian, if you don't understand this, you don't study your Bible. Amen. And when you don't study your Bible, you don't get any results. So don't be surprised when you put in prayer requests and nothing happens. Mm. You're not even doing this. This comes from this. And this is this. So we like to do a lot of requesting, but we don't like to do a lot of Psalms 130 verse 5. We say we have hope in the Word, but we can't even slow our day down to study it. Amen. Right? Because remember, all the way back to Psalms 25.5, the list was spiritual. He was saying that he waits on the Lord all day, and he was saying that so that God can wait on him. Hey, please wait on me. Please have mercy on my soul. Please yes. be long suffering. Please be patient. All those things that we spiritually have to go through comes from this. Yes. It's a work in progress. Yes. So when you ask God for something... You have to understand that you have to do something too. Because while you're asking God for something, God is already working on you daily for whatever purpose he has. Because the person that does the creating, they decide. So don't be discouraged by that. If you create something, you decide what you want to do with it, right? So devil out paints. If he paints something and decide, oh, I'm going to paint over this. He painted that. We can't come in and say, oh, no, hey, why you do that? He decide what he want to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. So don't let the world trick and fool you. Romans talks about that. The creator can do whatever they want to do, right? When it's your birthday, you get to make any request you want to make. You want to have chicken. You want to have pork. You want to drive to New York. You want three cakes. That one day, you get to do it, right? So then God is the creator. He decides. Don't be confused Amen. by that. Don't be discouraged by that. Okay? There's a bumper sticker I once saw and it stuck in my mind. It says, Lord, grant me patience, but hurry. <laughs> the story of Abraham comes to mind with 
Sarah and Isaac yeah. and Hagar mm -hmm. and yeah. Ishmael, how Abraham could not wait on the Lord yeah. and Sarah couldn't wait on the Lord to fulfill what was promised from the very beginning. Do we see what mess that turned into? Um, and that's another example, just like Samson was in order for us to realize it's, it's, it's human nature for us to want things when we want it. Yes, and right. we don't get it. We get grumpy and we do whatever we want to do. And, and the, to get what we want if it's bad enough. And the thing that's so sad when we as Bible students, again, don't think of the world. The world is lost, so they don't know what they're talking about. But we're supposed to know what we're talking about. Those individuals that Pat mentioned, their intentions were good. Yeah. Like, we, we can't lose sight. Like, we start conceptualizing things because we think it's already where God's going to take us anyway. Like, they thought, you already going to give me a son anyway, right? Yeah. So maybe you forgot to tell me that I had to do something to get this son. So I'm going to help you. You start rationalizing. Yeah, you moving slow. So you probably was waiting on me. I'm waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on me. We're waiting mm -hmm. on each other. That's what we do. So when that bumper sticker says, hey, I'm going to wait, but hurry up. Like, hey, come on. I'm waiting. What time? <laughs> you, hey, you checking the church website? Anything, anything popped up? Like, that is what we do because we think, as Bible students, well, God going to lead me down that path anyway. So I'm going to start walking because God probably already there. So he just want me to start. That's not waiting. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? That's not waiting. So when we're confused at, man, how, do, how long do I wait? What am I supposed to do? Start rationalizing the ramification of the actions that you want to do and see where that would lead you spiritually. And then you would think, wow, wait a minute. Maybe this isn't a good, good idea. Maybe it's not a good idea to sleep with Sarah's servant because Sarah probably going to yes. be jealous. Like, just I'm going to just maybe take a wild guess yes. mm -hmm. that she might be jealous. Then she may get so jealous, she may try to do something to the child or the mother, and now we have a big fight on our hands. But it's all because I thought God was there. So we was walking ahead of it. So God probably there already. So sometimes the world will say God catching up, but we're Christians. We play the other game. We say God is already outside, so I'm going to go outside and meet him there, meet him in glory. That's what Abraham and them thought. We're going to meet God there. Isaac, we, over there, we got to go get him. God don't work like that. God wants things done in decent and in order on his terms and in his time frame. Because like, wasn't it that, 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 uh, that, that Sarah lost faith and got mad? Yeah, because time is going. I'm a thousand years old. I don't have a kid yet. How long I got to wait? It's a long time. Boy, this kid can be running around, want to play soccer. I'm old. And then, and then when it happened, then Sarah got mad. Yeah, why did I? Abraham, why you do that? That was stupid. Now look. Yeah, get rid of course. Every time I see this child, I'm going to think about how stupid that was. Getting angry with of course. And then what God had to do? God had to fix it. God had to come to who? Ishmael's mom. God had to fix it. Why? Because that's a soul. You made that soul. That's your fault. You made that child. And now you want to get rid of him. Huh? So let's get, let as we close, let's get personal. So when we as church, when two people, when, when two people come together outside of marriage and they have a kid, their parents tell them, you married. You made that child. Then what happens? They end up getting a divorce eventually because you can't force it. You do something wrong, you live with your consequences. Don't try to fix that. Only God can fix sin. You can't fix that. You think that just putting a Band-Aid over a gunshot wound is going to fix that? No. Only God can fix sin. You think just kicking that child out is going to fix that? That you're just going to forget you made a child, a soul? It don't work like that. God don't work like that. And even in our foolishness, God had to come down and be a part of two people's lives because of the two people that were supposed to be after his own heart couldn't wait. 
Couldn't yeah. wait. And it affected mankind. That mm -hmm. action disrupted history. Mm -hmm. Human history yeah. to this day. Look how busy God is. Every decision you make is a ripple effect that can have ramifications larger than our wildest dream. And that's what Abraham and Sarah found out. Sarah, most in, uh, better than Abraham, I think. All the women can attest to that. Every woman in the world would say that was a bad idea. That's one of those things where you say you yelling at each other. Or no, let's say this. You fighting over the last cookie. And you say you have it. No, you have it. No, you have it. Then you say you have it and I eat it. Then you say, oh, no, I wanted you to say you have it one more time. Then I can eat it. That's one of those things. Like you was like, oh, I just wanted you maybe Abraham to say, oh, no, I love you so much. I'm not going to do it. But then you did it. You have to wait. So in our lives, especially if we are allowed to live tomorrow, you go home tonight, you pray, ask for forgiveness of your sins. But be mindful of your daily responsibility, but your purpose. Because in waiting on God, you fulfill yourself and you will have a better day. If you don't believe it, try it. Then analyze the days you had before when you weren't waiting and see if it comes out better. But if you wait as David, the times he waited, he had better days. When he didn't wait, he was crying. Ashes were on his head because he didn't wait. Simeon, you have to say something? No, I was saying that is the same thing when God tells um, Adam. Because you listen to your wife. And you sweat on my bro. That's how you want to end it with the wife? You just sit way over there? Really, Simeon? That's how you try to do it? Oh. Okay, any closing comments before we close? Okay, let's go to Garden.